Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for April 28th through and including May 5th. So that would be thir Friday through Thursday. Now, I am going to be using my Radley Valentine Angel Tarot cards for the main readings. I will pull one from my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. I will also, oops, a little noisy there, will be using my Inspirational Wisdom from Angels and Fairies, written by Francis Monroe, artwork by Judy Mastrangelo, and of course my Emily Anderson Crystal Deck. Now I'm going to be, this is not the main readings, those will come and they will be labeled such or they will be, you know, described as such. But for the overview, I am going to be using my Weight Rider Traditional Tarot and I will pull one from my Osha Zen Tarot. Now remember, I tell you that I always say this, I pray, meditate, and infuse all the decks with Reiki energy. But remember, these are general readings. They may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest. Okay? I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to God, Spirit, Holy Spirit, Higher Power, and just ask that the words come through. And hopefully I don't get too much in the way of them. But yes, I like to try to figure things out too. Anyway, what do we have going on right now? We have on the, towards the end, the 29th of April... We have Mars 18 degrees, sextiling with Uranus 18 degrees. Now remember, Mars is the warrior planet, very much an Aries energy here. Cancer is our um, water sign, cup energy. It is our, um, you know, it's spiritual, it's flowing, it's an emotional time. Uh, cancer is also very much the moon baby. Now we also have Uranus. Uranus is expect the unexpected. It's been in uh, Taurus since, what was it, 2018 until 2025. Taurus is our earth energy, money, job, career, and we are in Taurus season now. So Uranus in Taurus does have a little bit more pull right now, but they're sextiling together. Now sextiling is basically, it, it, it is a connection between the two, and remember we have the expect the unexpected with that warrior energy, but it's not a very strong, it's kind of like the irritation energy of two, two acquaintances and they're trying to get something done. It's not a real strong partnership, but it's not necessarily, um, you know, they're not at each other's throats at the same time. So now we go to the 4th of, of May, which is Venus in Gemini and Neptune in Pisces. Uh, you know, Venus is relationships, love. Venus loves beautiful things, loves to have, you know, good, you know, good, just good, um, you know, just likes to have that good, life, lovely type of energy about her. Gemini is very intellectual. So it's, you know, so this is where, you know, Venus is holding her court in Gemini right now, and she's having that intellectual salon going on. She is, you know, she is having people talk to her and stimulate her, you know, intellectually. Now, but we square, what well, it's squaring though with Neptune, Neptune very mysterious, very um, deep, doesn't, doesn't quite give anything away. Neptune is very, um, you, know, con, you know, very close to the vest type of energy and also in Pisces. So Neptune and Pisces are very water energies. You know, again, that, that water energy that we were talking about, spiritual, but again, there's no secrets coming out. So, uh, so Venus and Gemini, they're squaring each other, so think of it as a square, and they're kind of, they're not, you know, they're kind of pressuring each other. You know, Venus wants Neptune and Pisces to deliver the secrets. You know, um, Neptune and Pisces is not necessarily getting along with Venus and Gemini right now. We do have on the 5th, um, Venus again, sextiling with Jupiter in Aries. And again, it's that, it's that kind of they're rubbing shoulders with each other. They're not real irritated with each other, but they're not necessarily best buds. Jupiter, which is in Aries right now, will be leaving Aries towards the end of the month and will be going into Taurus. So there's a lot of things that this Jupiter wants to get done. Now, the interesting thing that I find interesting is on the 5th of May, we have a full moon in Scorpio. Um, you know, I do believe there's going to be some type of an eclipse. I'm sorry I didn't um, look that up more so. The full moon will be about 133 
p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's when it will have reached its fullness. Now remember, the full moon is that time when I tell you to release, relinquish, and request. Release what's holding you back. You may not even know what's holding you back. So what I do is I ask, you know, higher power, hey, whatever's holding me back, please release me from that. Relinquish is what you know. What you know is not necessarily good for you. So that could be, you know, that could be some dietary changes or it could just be some emotional baggage. Um, or something else, and then request, because requesting, we if we don't ask, how do how does someone know? How does higher well higher power knows? But you know, if you don't request, you don't receive as much. How's that? Okay, so there's a release, relinquish, and request. We do have that full moon now. Scorpio is. Um, you know, Scorpio is, you know, we have Scorpio in the southern node, which is about a lot of history energy. Remember, we have Mercury in retrograde, so we're going back. We're going back to some basics. We're going back to some, maybe some muckier times, okay? Um, Scorpio does have a lot of connection with Pluto. It's the, it, they are both in the business of transformation, digging deep and you know and like you know i've talked about it in the last couple of ones about mucking out the outhouses too so we do have that the interesting part now besides that is that we have well the full moon will be squaring pluto in aquarius so aquarius again is that air energy pluto again is that you know um oh my good goodness very um transform transformative energy so that's why when Pluto's in Aquarius, that's why the revolutionary um, stuff that I talk about, 1770s to um, 17, almost to the 1800s was happening. So we have it squaring. Again, they're both pushing each other. Now, you know, uh, Pluto's pushing the minds, the thought, and, you know, that full moon, Scorpio, is just, is just pushing wherever it can push at. It's kind of getting into the crevices of, the places that need to be cleaned out. So we have that. They're squaring each other. So it's kind of like they're uh, with each other. But now we have, though, the full moon trining. Now trining is that partnership. They're working together. And it's trining with Saturn in Pisces, trining with Neptune in Pisces, and trining with Mars in Cancer. So I told you, Neptune, very mysterious energy, very deep, not necessarily letting you know what's going on with this. Saturn, Saturn is the rule keeper, is the one that tries to, you know, lay down that law. Doesn't necessarily like being in Pisces. Pisces doesn't like necessarily like having Saturn, but they are going to get together. They are going to, you know, kind of break some rules here or make some rules. And then we have that Mars. So, you know, the thing is that you've got your Scorpio, your Pisces, your Cancer. You've got a lot of the, um, that, that, a lot of that energy working together. And I'll tell you that I have, you know, I have worked or lived with all three of these signs and, you know, they can, they can bicker, they can bicker with each other. But, and, you know, and I, I've seen this where they're bickering with each other. I've entered into a room, say, hey, what's going on? And all of a sudden they are in total agreement with each other. And now, you know, they're like, ah, after, you know, after that, that fourth person, it's kind of like they all like, they all just come together and they go after, you know, they're, they're very focused. I kind of feel like it's like the, uh, the Lord of the Rings with the tower where that, you know, the eye, whatever, Sarah's, the eye, and then all of a sudden it's just focused on you. It's not comfortable. I've learned whenever I have uh, water signs um, kind of doing some bickering, walk, walk away, step back. Love them all, but step back, you know. Then, but then we have that full moon opposing Uranus in Taurus. Remember, we are in Taurus season. Uranus is, you know, expect the unexpected. So, and opposing is opposing. You know, I want this, I want this. And, you know, kind of going after each other. So it's an interesting, it's always interesting. Oh, my goodness. It could be a very emotionally tiring and exhausting time for all of us. Um, remember too, and I've been posting on the community page and wherever, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and also Twitter, we are having a ton of solar storms. We have Mercury retrograde. There's a lot of ascension energy going on. 
There's a lot of things going on with the Schumann resonance. Now, you know, they've been, they've been having some real big blocks of the white, and then they've had these streaks. And I was reading somewhere that they're saying that the streaks are actually developing into a pattern. So we will, so a lot of things we can't control, and ah, a lot of things, well, we can make some choices, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we can make, that we are in control. In fact, you know, usually it means that we're not. Okay, so anyway, let's go on and read, do this. I don't mean to sound like a gloomy guts, because it's actually, um, it's very, it, 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 the energies is not letting things be status quo anymore. Okay, so higher power, Holy Spirit, could you tell us, could you give us some signs, oh, not out, what's going on, what do you want to tell just everyone out there that's watching this overview? What do we want to know with the overview? What do we want to know with the overview? Here we go. Here, here we go. Go. I do think we have to. Uh, I think we have to change how we view things. We have always. We have been making some changes in that, but kind of a hanged man energy. Let's see what we've got going on here. Okay, so we have a seven, and now anything reversed to me means that we just need to pay a little more attention to it. So seven is. Um, it, it's a divine number, so it has a divine intervention. I sometimes call it the divine umbrella, so something, something, someone, God, source is watching out over us, even if we don't feel that way. Um, divine intervention, but also can be divine interference. So this is pentacles. Pentacles is that Taurus. It is that um, Virgo, Capricorn, money, job, career. It is very much, um, you know, very much tangible energy. And what's going on here is, you know, here, this is a lot of times, some of my cards will say waiting for the harvest. But the main thing is here is that it's time. It's time for whatever it is, and we are ready. We are ready for whatever this is, whatever the next step is going on here. So it is a time of, you know, a lot of times this is you've, you've done your work. You've got, you know, you've done as much as you can do, and now it's kind of out of your hands. It, it's just... Stay prepared. It's out of your hands. Things will move forward. We just don't know the time, the date, anything like that. Okay? But you're ready. And this does have money energy to it. Okay, let's see what else we have here. So now we come to judgment. It should help if I put glasses on. So now we have a 20. 20 is two tenths. Transition, transition. Uh, two is our choices, our decisions coming together, crossroads. Which way do we go? Zero of the, tw of the 20 is, um, is our God source. It's our higher power energy here. Judgment. Basically, judgment is kind of like, what is going on here? This is where we, you know, we are ready. We are ready. Is it, are we ready for judgment? Are we ready to move on? Are we ready to see the truth, the truth about ourselves? You know, this is, you know, many people are welcoming the judgment because it's kind of like, I don't want to stay here anymore. And now I have to look at myself. I have to look at what else is going on. And I'm really ready to move forward. Okay, so let's go on our last card. We have a two energy again, crossroads, choices, decisions. Now these two are higher. Um, these two are major arcana, so it's more universal energy. It's more the bigger overview, what needs to happen energy, too. So um, the two, like I said, is uh, choices, decisions. We have a lot of divine energy here, and then the high, high priestess brings that divine energy again to us. Uh, you know, we do, you know, there's a lot of similarities between the two of these. Um, you know, the high priestess is that, um, you know, has a lot to do with the Holy Spirit energy, has a lot to do with our intuition into our, you know, connection with higher power. A lot of this is prayer, meditation, you know, just connecting, 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 um, you know, kind of, you know, the, the high priestess isn't always going to give us the good answers that we want, the high priestess is going to give us the truth, 
but sometimes um, the high priestess puts it in riddles. Sometimes the clarity isn't always there for us. I don't know why I'm getting it, but the clarity isn't always there. The judgment, I think, is going to bring us more clarity, uh, but the high priestess is going to kind of kind of muss it up a little bit. It's not, you know, the clarity is not going to be there, but it is connecting with God, Source, Higher Power, Holy Spirit, and listening. You know, this is this is a call to prayer, call to action, call to connect with Higher Power. So something's going on. It's a big, you know, and again too, we have that full moon, and the full moon. I say, you know, start doing your release, relinquish, uh, requesting. Start doing your ceremonies. Start doing whatever it is. I don't worship the moon. I look at it as a connection for me um, to higher power. But you can start like on the 2nd of May, 2nd, and also through the, you know, through the 8th. Okay, but we just have all that water energy. And again, too, we have the water that's down here. We have a, um, a crescent moon that's here, pomegranates over there. Uh, connection to Old Testament over here. We have water energy here. The people have lost a lot of their coloring, but they do have, but their hair does have that yellow energy to it too. So we do have, and again, we do, and something that's striking me is we do have a lot of yellow energy here also. So there is a brightness. There is a hope. Okay. Not sure where we're going with any of that, but you, you tell me. Like I said, it's best if I, if I don't know if I said it this time around, it's best if I just, like, deliver the message. Okay, that card fell on my lap. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so this is an eight. This is an eight, and this is talking about letting go. This is moving on. But the thing is, whenever we're holding on, thing, on, some, on to something too tightly, it slips away from us. So whatever this is all about, we have to relinquish. We have to, um, you know, we have to release. We have to relinquish. We have to let go and just kind of, you know, it's kind of like just, you know, if you're, you know, I don't jump out of airplanes, but it's like you have to have a blind, crazy faith you have to have a blind, crazy trust. So we do have an eight unlimited opportunities, unlimited possibilities. And it's just time to let go. Let go of what? Um, you know, let go. We have, again, the Pluto, uh, Scorpio, all very transformational energies. And um, if we cling too tightly, um, hmm, we may not be able to move forward. And again, like I said, there's a lot of things that we have, you know, that we're in a lot of ascension, solar, you know, a lot of ascension energy right now. In order to move with that, a lot of things we just have to, again, just let go. So this is going to be a time where we may find ourselves letting go. Okay? Interesting with that, um, we will see, but again, too, that seven of pentacles is the, you are ready. You are ready for whatever is coming next. All right, so everyone there, please, if you're watching this, um, please go down and do the like, share, subscribe, clicking on the bell for notifications. You really help me and you keep me on air, so I do thank you for that. I do want to let you know that um, Hubby is doing better, so thank you also for your prayers and that uh, and your comments. I've appreciated hearing from you. All right, we will get to the main videos, but if you're just watching this one, always remember, please, that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.